So to that top story, the ANC says it supports the Office of the Public Protector. This amid increasing calls for the incumbent, Busisiwe Mkwebani, to resign. The governing party was speaking after its four-day National Executive Committee meeting in Joburg. It's also referred the issue of the future of NEC member Derek Hanakom to its top six national officials. The party's also resolved to disband its Youth League's National Executive Committee. Fresh from its four-day gathering... The ruling party says it's up to the task of addressing challenges facing the country. Amid calls from some quarters for the public protector to step down, the ANC says it supports the office. The public protector has lost several crucial court battles and has been labelled incompetent with a poor understanding of a constitutional mandate. The question uh, you ask is, uh, are we going to instruct our, our caucus to... Um, take action against the public protector. We've not discussed that matter at all. We've not taken a view as to whether or not we will ask the public protector to step down. That's been the narrative in the media. On NEC member Derek Hanekom admitting he had met the EFF to plan the ousting of former President Jacob Zuma, the ANC deferred the matter to the top six. And on the issue of uh, allegations against Comrade Derek Hanekom, this matter was raised in the meeting of the National Executive Committee and the executive, National Executive Committee referred this matter to officials for processing. And its Youth League's NEC, which has been largely invisible, has now been disbanded. A task team will now oversee its affairs. Since its mandate has come to an end, the National Executive Committee dissolved the ANC Youth League National Executive Committee. And we appointed a national youth task team to oversee the process of rebuilding the ANC Youth League, of implementing a program of action, working with Progressive Youth, youth Alliance and other youth formations. The ANC has also resolved to work towards unity and address the economic challenges facing the country. Mzondelebej, SAPC News, Johannesburg. Also as part of that NEC statement today, it says it's hoping for a speedy resolution to the ETOLS issue, but the National Executive Committee of the Governing Party goes on to say it affirms the user pay principle. Well, at the briefing today at Latuli House, the SABC senior political reporter Mzwandile Mbeje joining me now. Mzwandile, hi, Thank good you. evening. Thanks, Steve. All right, I mean, I suppose we must start with the ANC Youth League. Absolutely. I can't recall when it last had a conference, quite some time ago, I suppose when Colin Mayino was, uh, was formally elected. I suppose the NEC of the ANC has just lost patience. Absolutely, and the pressure that has been put by the members of the Youth League as well. When this NEC started, Stephen, on Friday, there were hundreds of people outside protesting, calling for the disbandment of the Youth League because they are saying in their view it's completely irre irrelevant and there are so many issues that are needed to be tackled by young people, but it's nowhere to be seen. In fact, it, they felt it must be resolved, and I think that is somehow a victory for them that the ANC, the motherboard, has listened. Okay, I mean, and then ETOs, <laughs> just explain this to me. On the one side, it's supposed to be dealt with, there's supposed to be some sort of expedited solution. Yes. On the other side, there's the affirmation of the user pays principle. I think this is, they are trying to strike a very fine balance here, Steve. The, 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 the government policy at the moment is that the ETOs are there. So then the ruling party can't say to people uh, about its own government, people must disrespect it. I mean, it will be uh, unheard of. So they are basically saying they respect the processes or the status quo that is there. But the fact that there are processes which are trying to uh, get to a different conclusion to that one, so they also support. So you can see that uh, they are also caught in a very difficult situation. I mean, someone like Tito, who's the member, Tito Mboweni, the finance minister, who's the member of the NEC, I, I would guess that he stood up there and then he said, guys, and you, you, you say you want the money, you want extra money, but you say you don't want this kind of money, so how are you going to resolve this kind of situation? And how do you present yourself to outside world when you don't honor your own decisions? So they are in a, 
Right, I mean, leading up to this to this meeting, it started on Friday, last Wednesday night, of course, yeah. that statement at 11.30, I think it was, 11.28, from the Secretary-General, Ace Makhashule, in which he said that uh, the former tourism minister, Derek Hanukkah, was a charlatan, a wedge driver, because he had met with the Secretary-General of the EFF uh, during the time when there was a move in Parliament to remove then-President Jacob Zuma. Yeah. This issue now goes to the top six. What can we read into that? That's what we asked, uh, Stephen, during that press conference to say, on the face of it, perhaps there's a case for a DC here. So why are you not going for it? But he said, no, you see that issue was raised and the decision of the NEC was, no, let's take it to, to, the, uh, to, to the officials. It actually tells you, Steve, that uh, they wouldn't allow it to be discussed at that NEC because I think it was going to be heated. It was going to be perhaps go out of hands. And I think they want to manage it properly so that they can perhaps somehow find a way to contain it. Remember, uh, Haneko may, uh, may have um, violated the, the, the party's constitution, but of course that statement from the SG is not the statement uh, which is fit for that office. There was a part of the statement, I think it's important, so I'm going to read it. It says, yeah. there's a state sentence in the NEC statement saying there is persistent behavior at leadership levels that includes factionalism and untested and wild accusations. Now, it's not directed yeah. at anyone, right? In fact, this one, um, we understand that from the political report of the president on Friday, he was very hard and clear on these issues. Remember, there have been issues of spy allegations. There have been these public attacks, these Twitter outbursts from various members. And I think uh, the president wants to really uh, uh, send marching orders to say, we can't continue like this if we want to build unity. And I think it's located in that context to say, so it doesn't matter which side you're on. So if you behave in this way, it's destructive. I mean, if you Google the phrase, no more public spats, you'll find an ANC leader saying it probably four years ago. Can we expect anything to change now? I mean, sometimes it looks like the NEC is having its meeting on Twitter. In fact, that's the questions we asked to say, uh, You've been saying this thing so many times, so many times, but nothing changes. What now? I think the answer was, unity is a process. We keep working on it. Mzundile Mbeje, thank you very much indeed. Our senior reporter, a senior political reporter, excuse me, here at the...